Yes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our episode 640, uh, 11th of July, 2019 of Aussie Tech Heads. How you all doing? Hope you've had a good week. Had a great night last night, State of Origin, hey? The Blues, victorious again, two years in a row. Love it. We only got another uh, 10 to go, and then they'll be really happy. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Glenn Goodman, and we're going to listen uh, here from Joe in a second. But before that, we better tell you that we are brought to you by Start New Company. And you can go to Start New Company, oh, not them ones, you can go to startnewcompany.com.au, register your company fast, easy and direct with ASIC. All your docs are provided, uh, docs are held in your account for a down, download at a later time down the track. Uh, if you're an accountant or other professional, you are also able to brand all your documents with your company name. Uh, we do. They do uh, ABN and GST, TFN and PAYG registrations. So uh, get involved in some of that stuff if you're looking to register a company. And also athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, easy install, WordPress, Joomla and Drupal plus a thousand others. And also from Jace, at, uh, who does his little Fitbit app, apps for them, sticks them on the app gallery. He has got one of those ones. Now, I don't know why there's two pictures there if you're on the Facebook, but let's uh, try and drag one out like that so we can uh, see that. Uh, yeah, if you uh, want to get one of these Aussie Bite clock faces from the Fitbit app gallery, just go to the app gallery, download one of the Aussie Bite clock faces and use the promo code ATH19 and he'll give you 33% off. So how good is that going? Very good. Might hear from Jason uh, Will next week, see how they're going. Uh, okay, so yes, as I said, we have Joe this week. That's just me and Joe. How are you going, Joe? Hey, Glenn. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. What have you been up to this week? Oh, I've been playing around with my smart things this week. Nice, good. What sort of, what, and what can you uh, uh, expand on smart things? Yeah, you know, the Samsung smart things thing that I've been playing with over the last few weeks. Oh, okay, yes. And oh, is that like the little router thing and so forth? Yeah, it's one of those little router things that's got an inbuilt um, IoT like hub in it. Yep. And so you got it all working? Uh, no, I haven't <laughs> got it all working. So I don't know what is wrong with it. I've been on technical support with Samsung. Yep. And um, they haven't been all that helpful. So I don't know. I'm going to have to try it again. Maybe I'll get somebody else that's a bit more knowledgeable. Mm. I think sometimes. Uh, do you get to the stage where you just factory reset and just try from scratch? You know, because maybe um, you've, you've... I've, I've actually tried that. I've tried the factory reset and tried to go from scratch. I, I don't know. Um, I, I have to sort of... Just I'm, I'm thinking that it could be faulty now because it's been a few weeks now and I haven't been able to get it mm. to work properly. Yeah, how much was it? Well, it, it was one of those kits. You get the kit and it comes with uh, a few sensors, a few movement sensors, a few temperature right. sensors... So, so it's about three hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, is it is it worth just buying another one just to to see if it is a, a faulty one? But yeah, for three hundred, yeah, you're not going to do that. So. Uh, I've got the uh, saying that Ro um, Rob saying on the Facebook that I got bad echo. I wonder why. Don't know. I can't hear no bad echo. I, no, I, I'm, you're all right at this end, Joe. I don't know what that would be. You got your okay. phone? You got no Facebook not coming back to you? No, no, it's all good here, Rob. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that would be. Um, don't know. Don't know. Uh, we'll keep on plugging along uh, because it's too hard to stop and start, and especially if I can't hear it. So, um, yeah. So that's a bit annoying. I mean, I've got this brand new uh, Samsung Smart Things Hub. It's mm. supposed to do all these U boot things, and I can't even get to use it properly. It, it still doesn't even detect my my Google Home or it doesn't de de detect my Google Mini, it doesn't detect anything. Right, okay. Well, that's no good at all. Well, hopefully we'll, uh, yeah, you can sort that out. Just keep ringing the tech support. I'm sure they'll, you'll get there sooner or later. You'll get there one day, Joe. One day. Uh, all right, you can listen to podcasts all day long if you wanted to on the Aussie Tech Radio dot com uh, just download the tune in radio app and uh, search for Aussie Tech Radio it's about wall to wall 24 7 Australian podcasts that we've uh, that have that have responded to me or they've wanted to put their podcast in the in the round in the 
uh, in the thingy bobber and uh, you can listen to them if there's something you want us to talk about put it on the Facebook early in the week if you can uh, and you can get us on the youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads and Aussie Tech Heads dot com dot au forward slash podcast um, yes oh and a shout out to Graham who is at Kingscliff at the moment representing North Cronulla at the Aussie IRB Championship so uh, hope the, hope the North Cronulla boys are doing alright and girls so good to see Graham. He had, had some nice weather, but he said it was a bit choppy. It makes for all more fun, I reckon. Uh, yeah, so uh, how's that? We'll just check in with, uh, see how that that echo's going, see if it's disappeared yet. But we'll um, we'll see how that goes. How does that work? That doesn't make any difference. Uh, all right, let's get into some Actually, stories. just heard the echo come through that time. I just pushed a button. Thinking uh, it might have so stopped that, it, that's right. <laughs> so I thought I pushed a button. Think it might have stopped it, but it, it made it worse here. But I'm not sure what that would be. But hopefully it'll go away. Saying still some echoes coming through. I wonder whether it's my mic or something. I might move the mic a bit further away. How's that? I've just changed another little setting, so we'll see how that goes. How's that, Romeo? Is that, is that much better? Uh, all right. So while he's doing that, uh, look, I'll start off with MSY. You know, we all know and love MSY, don't we? Is yeah, set, that's not far from me. Is uh, set to be acquired by a mining company for $17.5 million. So look, I've got a little picture. If you're on the YouTubes, uh, there's a picture of MSY near me. There we go. There's, that's my local one. Doesn't look like much, does it? A big nah. big roller door and a, <laughs> and a little shop and little two little shop doors. But yeah, that's oh, the one. It says it's gone now. The Echo? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I, I, I pushed a button. I think I knew. I know what it was, Joe. Pull that mic back close. Um, Still getting used to this new USB sound card. Yes, I know. Isn't it good? A little fifteen dollars sound card might have solved all my problems over the last fifteen years. I can't I can't believe it. A uh, dollar a year. I should have spent. <laughs> um, yes, MSY. So they're going to be acquired by a former mining company called Lanker Graphite Limited. So the two companies have discussed the transaction since August last year. And they issued an ASX announcement proposing a price of $17.5 million, outlining a series of financial and regulatory steps to be taken to make the transaction happen. In December last year, Lanka Graphite's annual report explained why it wants MSY. Uh, the company plans to exit the mining business and pivot to e-commerce. The MSY's national network of 28 stores, plus its online presence, are uh, its chosen way, of, way to achieve this. MSY takes a minimalist approach to customer service, as we know. Uh, I don't know, is it the same down there, Joe, where you are in your MSY, just pretty pretty uh, low on customer service, I guess? Uh, um, yes, once you once you get to the store there, it's it's in a line outside the door, and it's, right. you know, what do you want? Um, um, here it is, and there's no, not much customer service. It's just, you know, you know it's the best price. You go there, you go and get what you want, and then you leave. Mm. Yeah, so it's look. It's, I've been to the. I went to Varsity today actually to buy this USB sound card. And look, last couple of times I have to admit the they, they've got a new guy down there, and it's really it's been a, quite a pleasant experience. So it's been pretty good. He's uh, I've asked him a couple of questions and been pretty knowledgeable. And yeah, I haven't minded it. Sometimes you go in there and it's really hard to understand the guys. And um, but no, it's been pretty good lately. Uh, MS- uh, I guess it all depends on how many people. I mean, like sometimes I go there. There physically is a, a line out the door for people coming in to get stuff. So you know they haven't got time to sit there and have a chat with you. No, no, well, that's right. But like, who who wants a chat? Like, I, if if it's going to be cheaper, <laughs> I'll just take the yes, no, thank you, and out. I'll take that. Uh, MSY takes a minimalist approach to customer service online and in store and seemingly focuses on system builders. So, yeah, so you don't really go in there if you're looking for a, uh, a uh, I don't know, a, a suite of computers or, or whatever. It is a parts sort of a place, although they do sell pre-built machines, uh, but you also a lot of parts. Uh, the formula has delivered one of Australia's largest retail chains and propelled it to a hundred million in annual sales. That's quite a bit, isn't it? It's good to know some of these stats when they when they come out, isn't it? Uh, MSY, despite the MSY shopping experience being rather less sophisticated, uh, that offering by many direct rivals and many more e-tailers and other fields. Yep. Uh, so the question is, I guess, once this place takes over, they're looking to move into the e-commerce market. Will MSY remain the MSY? Will the prices stay the same? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully, hopefully, uh, any other little cheap 
joints down there, you, Joe? Or is MSY the only one? Uh, there is a few. Um, but we got Brett on the Facebook saying that my voice is really echoey, really bad. So something's changed since last time. What, since I just tweaked something? Yeah, it's gone, it's gone really bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, if it's that bad, we do you want us to stop the Facebook guys. I, I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so there, there is a couple of places around here that are fairly cheap, but no, but not, not as cheap as the MSY. Yeah, yeah. I think what where I'm thinking if the MSY sort of goes the way that uh, that might go, you know, someone taking it over. I think we've got Umart. You got Umart down there in Sydney. Yeah, we have a Umart down here. We have an M Wave. Oh yeah, they're pretty good. They're all right. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah, so good old MSY, eh? Uh, let, let me see if I... I'm still getting people coming back saying that I've got bad echo. Let me just switch the mic on this. I might try and use the mic that's on my cam um, rather than using my desk mic. All right, no worries. See if that makes it a little bit better. Well, let's do that and uh, see what happens. I don't know. Just saying, don't stop the Facebook. So, okay, now I'm using the, uh, <laughs> the desk cam, uh, the... The, the cam mic is that any better guys well we'll just see how joe goes with that um so what else has been going on this week's been a bit uh a bit slow with interesting stories to tell you the honest truth uh there's i've got a couple of weird ones that's how you know it's a slow week there's a couple of weird ones coming up um so that's all good but look i'll just move into another one while the guys are getting back to joe about his his sound look, more than likely it's coming from the from the the streaming software that we're using but uh, I can't hear the echo, so uh, it's unfortunate. I, I just can't hear what's going when I, on. When I changed over to the other mic, did I make any difference from your end? Oh, I can hear that. I can hear that you're on a different mic, but uh, it's but no echo or anything. I can't hear nothing. Uh, let's see if I can. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing. It I says can... okay. It says now. It says there's no echo anymore now, but I'm very loud. So, um, might yeah. have to just turn me down a little bit, Glenn. All right. Well, I'll turn you down to there. How's that? Okay. We'll see how that goes. You finish your story, and we'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> Unveiled. Uh, Newcastle debuts a driverless CBD to beach shuttle. So these are automated cars. Are ca- you know everywhere aren't they they're starting to become everywhere so it unveiled an automated shuttle bus that plans to run between the central business district and the beach to complement its existing transport strategies now i've got a picture of the bus there's a picture of the bus that's <laughs> that little funny funky looking thing they're all funky looking things aren't they these automated autonomous vehicles uh the lord mayor has of newcastle said we are planning for passengers to be able to take in views of the city's harbour along the proposed two kilometre loop uh, from Watt Street along Wharf Road to Nobby's Beach and back, making it a very appealing to tourists. A larger circuit will include some of Newcastle's other beachside destinations after a couple of months. So there you go, there's the little the little thing. I still I don't know if I... one of those. They're really cool, those things. Yeah, I still don't know if I want to uh, just jump in one straight away. I, I don't know. It just feels I must weird. have meant it was in a controlled environment, though. It was at one of those exhibition shows. But... Um... Yeah, they're really cool. There was uh, just it just went around a circuit. It was all pre-programmed. Right, right. Yeah, so uh, look, I'd rather get on a one that's got the what's on tracks, like an automated train. But uh, yeah, but all right. Well, give us a give us a story, Joe, and let's see how the audio goes for you. Okay, so uh, was it last week or the week before? I talked about the new Raspberry Pi Four. Yep. Apparently now they've come out and they've. Um, admitted that uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 has a non-compliant um, USB-C charging port and it doesn't work with many of the um, many of the charges that are out in the market at the moment. Right. Yeah, apparently it was the uh, design of the USB-C port is incorrect. Oh. There is two CC pins on a, um, a USB-C port that are supposed to each get a uh, get their own 5.1k ohm resistor. Yep. But the Raspberry uh, Pi 4 came up with its own circuit design um, that allows them to share just one resistor. And this is not apparently, this is not a, a, a compliant thing apparently. And it breaks the compatibility with a lot of the, some of the uh, more, more powerful USB-C charges that are out in the market. Yeah, right. So what happens to all the ones that are out there? They just... No, no well, good. so you can still you can you can still use it, right? It's just that you've got to remember, though, that 
there are two types of, uh, if you're using one of these smart cables, you've got this, uh, what they call an EMARC cable, which is um, a USB cable with a chip inside it. Yeah. And that negotiates the power management of the of the USB. Right. Yeah, so since the USB um, C port on the Raspberry Pi is wired incorrectly, these smart cables don't detect the Pi 4 as a, uh, as a as a USB charger. They actually detect they actually detect it as a USB audio adapter, um, and then they don't charge. So hmm, that's okay. the problem with it. Yeah, right. Well, that's no good. Well, hopefully, not not many t- people listen to us have bought one. Oh, that, that, did you say they're going to fix it? Yeah, apparently they're saying that they're going to the next board revision that comes out. They're going to fix it with a new board. Um, but it's it's just basically a wiring behind the plug. Somehow they've stuffed that up. Um, but they do say that if you if you use the genuine uh, Pi Four charger, it'll still work. Right. Oh, okay. That's something. Yeah. So have you got the uh, Raspberry Pis in your place? I do, but it's a very old one. It's one of the first and se- or second one that's come out. I haven't had much to do with them lately. Have you? Is it is it in use or is it just in the uh, drawer somewhere? Ah, uh, sitting in my drawer somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got two, and uh, I don't really use them much these days. Like they've both got the Cody s- system on it, uh, but other than that, I don't know. We just, I don't know. You subscribe to Netflix and Stan, and you don't need it anymore. <laughs> I don't well, find. No, you don't. I originally got it so I can put Cody on it, mm. um, and it didn't work all that good. I mean, I've got the very first model. Admittedly, it was just a standard, you know. 512 megabyte one, the very first one. It didn't work all that good. Uh, but these days you can get a um, uh, an old Android phone. You know, it's got quad core on it and it's got, you know, two gigs of RAM on it and or three gigs of RAM on it. Yeah. Um, it's got the Bluetooth and it's got the Wi-Fi and it's got everything built in. And, you know, you just cast it across to a, uh, a Google Chromecast and away you go. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty. They're pretty neat little things. I think you can get it with the the power cable, the the case, and and the board. Obviously, for I think about one hundred and sixty bucks, something like that. It's pretty good for what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you finished with that one, Joe? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just just so that people who um who go out and buy this this new Raspberry Pi four, um, it just just be aware that it has got a. a uh, incorrectly wired USB-C port on it, so therefore, if you find any troubles getting it charged, um, try a different adapter. Um, probably be a good idea not to use one of those smart USB adapters once they've got the little chips in them, mm. because it doesn't like that. So just use a um, a standard adapter or use the one that came with it if you buy the whole kit. Yeah. All right. Very good. Good tip. Good tip. Now, the uh, ACMA, which is the Australian Communications and Media Authority, today released results of a modem quality study uh, that it's done into modems specifically uh, given out or sold to connect to the MBN. Now the problem is uh, the the MBN of I think the MBN commissioned this actually. Uh, yeah, yes, the the ACMA commissioned NX to undertake this study earlier this year. Uh, in, in its report, a large number of devices, which are the the Wi-Fi modems that are sold or given with the MBN have 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that is incapable of supporting the higher data ranges offered by FTTN slash B NBN services. So what I think they've found is NBN must be getting sick of getting blamed for everything. So they've commissioned a report and said, have a look at the mode, have a look at the Wi-Fi modems people are getting, eh? And so they've had a look at these Wi-Fi modems and they've found that, yeah, some of the modems uh, would barely break a 50 megahertz per second performance level. So as the uh, best performing devices achieve closer to 160. So uh, I guess, you know, if you're on a Wi-Fi, you're sitting on your phone and you're doing a speed test and you're only getting uh, 50 meg down and you've got a 90 meg connection, well, you'd be a bit upset, wouldn't you? But apparently you've got to check out your Wi-Fi modem. You might have a bung modem, uh, a router. So uh, yeah. What I always do when it comes to routers and Wi-Fi and stuff like that, um, a good tip I can give our listeners, for those that don't already know, is that... Um, see if you can find the most powerful processor that comes in on, you know, I, I, and also with this, the most amount of RAM that's in it as well. Because what mm. you will find is that, okay, you might have one or two devices on there, a phone and a laptop, and that might work fine. 
But um, once you start to load it up with TVs, uh, Google Homes, and, and whatever else, and three or four other devices, these ones that have got low powered processors in them, they don't actually work very well. They stay, they, um, they get all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They get all. Well, they, if, well, they get over, they, they don't run as, they get they saturate, choked. They yes. saturate the processor. The load is too high. Yeah. So therefore, and then, so what I have is I have the Asus, it's an, um, what is it, the 6.8U, right? That's a, a pretty good router, that. That's one that stands upright. It's got the three antennas on it. Yep. Um, it's got a dual core processor on it. I think it's a one gigahertz dual core processor. Um, and, geez, I can't remember now. I think it's one gig or two gigs of RAM built into it. Yeah, right, uh, right. Yeah, so, but it's a fairly, fairly um, powerful uh, router. It's not the most powerful, but when I got it a few years ago, it was very powerful. And even today, it still keeps up with the best of them. Yeah, well, I bought, uh, I've got these things in my place. These, you know, I think I've told you this before. These Unify uh, mesh thingy boppers, and they work all right. Because I, I, I've just gone straight out of the the modem into one of these, and then I put, I only put another one. So I've only got two. I've got another one in the box. I've got to put up somewhere. But these mesh together, so I can roam around the house, and then it just it just connects to the strongest one. They're both at the moment. These the both I've got are actually hardwired back to the modem, so it makes a makes a better experience. But you can do Wi-Fi uplinks as well. So you can just yeah, dot them around the house and they all talk to each other and yeah, as you move around, you get the best signal that you can. That's really good. They're, they're really And you get a nice little dashboard as well. Uh, shows you all the devices connected. You can see how much they're pulling down and pushing up. Um, you can do a lot, a lot of little smart little things. They're really good, those ones. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that, that reminds me of the system that I have, which is, well, it's the Samsung Smart Things Hub. I, I bought the one that was um, just a single hub with all the different attachments with the sensors and stuff. But you can actually go buy a, um, a mesh um, hub system where you've got one Wi-Fi router and it comes with two extenders or three extenders. Right. right and it does pretty much what that does there. And that's all, so that's pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah, those, I think those mesh things are the way to go, eh? Like, they just... Yeah, the internet's never been better in this house, and it's just great. It's just everything just connects. It's just it's just really good. Although uh, a little tip that uh, that I fell into, and it was uh, I think not too long ago, I went aha. I'm thinking I've got bad signal every you know in a couple of places I've got little dead spots, and what I worked out was that uh, when I plugged it into the existing modem, that I didn't turn the DHCP off of the, the mesh units. So I had the two DHCPs working and they were fighting each other. And then in a low signal area, uh, they kept dropping because I think they was trying to, to, to swap between both. It was trying, it was just having some funky issues. So uh, yeah, make sure if, you, if you've got multiple systems, make sure only one of them is, is serving out your IP addresses. That's, yeah, that's right. I mean, you get these ones that are uh, they're, 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 um, pre, um, pre uh, done to have DHCP on them. So. Um, if you do come across that problem, just go grab a, a YouTube video somewhere. Mm. Uh, there's plenty of them out there, and that shows you how to change it so that you can get one that's DHCP and one that's a static IP address. Yeah, so we've got, uh, I think, uh, who Justin's got in the Facebook, he's got a, uh, yeah, he got the BYO modem Linksys AC1200. and That's uh, a good modem, that. Yeah, and Brett's got the Google Wi-Fi. He's got five of them, uh, five units. Works great. Interface isn't the best, though. Oh, it's just good. interesting to know there, um, Brett, what, over what distance do you have those five? Do you have them over a distance of, say, the whole house and like, what's the furthest you can go with it? Yeah, so they're not too bad. That's the way to go. If you've got black spots or whatever in your house, you just a mesh. I wouldn't go extenders, personally. I like the, the mesh is, is the better way to go. The extenders can, you know, you, you can sort of, I don't know, you, you put them a little way away. Well, it's only going to extend a, a weak signal anyway. And I suppose it's the same with the, the meshy things, but at least they mesh together. Uh, okay, uh, what else are we up to? What else you got, Joe? Um, I, I came across this thing here about uh, Bill Gates. He was saying it in one of, in one of the interviews that he, uh, he calls um, a failure to fight Android his greatest mistake as, as when he was a, a CEO of Microsoft. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, no, yeah. they never liked they never liked each other, did they? But yeah, well, see, apparently uh, Bill Gates 
build. His biggest regret while he was working at Microsoft was the failure to leave Microsoft into a solid um, position in the smartphone wars. Um, in, in an interview with uh, VC firm uh, Village Global, he said that in the software world, particularly when it comes to platforms, there are winners take all markets. So you know the greatest mistake ever is whatever mismanagement I engaged in um, that caused Microsoft not to be what Android is today. Um, mm. Android is the Apple's is Android is the standard non-Apple phone platform system. Um, that was a natural thing for Microsoft to win. And you know it really is a winner takes all market. If you're there with half as many apps or 90% as apps, you're on the way to become complete doom. So therefore, um, Mark, um, Apple, one non-Apple operating system was not enough. No, well, I think they... $400 billion by not staying in the smartphone market. Yeah, I think, I don't know if they could have stayed in it. They were just too late to the game. For mine, yeah, Apple, okay, first out of the blocks, that's why they got full on. Um, and then what, Android came out, and then what, Microsoft tried to do their own? I, oh, I don't know. Well, actually, yeah, I, I actually still remember running a Microsoft operating system before Android even came out. Well, I, well, I wouldn't say before, but they were sort of like side by side. I remember running my first phone. What was it? It was a Samsung... Jeez, this is going back a bit now. Samsung Omnia, O M M N I A, Omnia, something like that. Mm. Um, it's an older phone. It's one of my first smartphones that I ever came up with, but that was running the Windows 6 version. Yeah, okay. That's a while ago. Well, well yeah. Brett just said that Gates uh, said that they should have been the second system because there's only place for two players. Well, that's sort of been borne out to be true, hasn't it? There is only space for two. But I think you cast your mind back. Uh, all the way back then and Windows was more of a you know don't give anything away for free blah 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 and so you know they wanted to, to, to everyone to pay for their operating system and, and I think when Google come along they said well hang on we'll, we'll give our operating system away for free and that just showed I think Google just needed to get into the market they wanted the market they were just hungry to get into the market they probably had a better vision uh, at the time and they jumped in and look at them now they've, they've got the they've got maybe the second spot maybe first spot who knows? But uh, mm. but but still, look at the Windows Store. I go on about this every now and then. I know, but look at the store. It's rubbish. The Windows App Store. It's rubbish, and yeah, it's still look, rubbish. Uh, look, that was half the reason um, that they they failed. I mean, their their equipment, their operating system was good. I mean, you know, the tiles that they use now, mm. right? That's a very. I mean, I used to like that operating system with the tiles. Um, they were actually active tiles, so that was pretty cool too. Um, it, it, it says here that um, in the interview, Bill Gates, um, you know, with with assets like Windows, um, Office, um, we could have got, if we if they had got the smartphone market, they would have they would have been one of the leading companies in the world, mm. you know, uh, uh, rather than Google. So. He takes full responsibility, uh, uh, reacting in that sort of manner back then. Not taking, you know, the, the, the forward step, forward step thinking to um, to, to push along and, and push that through. Mm. Yeah, I know. And like you would think that what Windows Ten has been out for now quite a little while. Uh, and yeah, like and as Justin just says on the Facebook, who uses the Windows Store? Like I've, I go there for certain things every now and then, but. Jeez, it's just, it's just everything, pretty much 90% of the things I've downloaded, and I could probably count the things I downloaded out of that thing on two hands, uh, probably 80% of them were just rubbish, and I ended up uninstalling it. Uh, just, just, just not yeah, it's rubbish. I don't rubbish. use the Windows Store either. I mean, if I ever need to use a program, I'll download the actual software from some website or something, but mm. oh, I don't use any of those Windows apps. What's you know, that? I spend a lot of time on my tablet as well, which is an Android tablet, so... I do a lot of my Facebooking and, you know, a lot of my, you know, Twitter and a lot of my Instagrams and whatever else on, on that. Just sit on the lounge, play with the the, 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 um, the thing that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, Windows Store, who cares? 
Uh, all right, well, what about... <clears throat> uh, how about this lady over in Perth? Uh, she's received a Telstra bill for $465,000. So uh, Karen from Bunbury in Western Australia. I bet you she would have fell on the floor when she opened that baby up. $465,595.23. Oh, yeah. Uh, Telstra executive said there were two issues. Well, there's definitely one issue. Uh, there was a system glitch that created the original problem and then human error to not pick it up as quick as we possibly could. Apparently she tried to ring Telstra, obviously, as you would, but just couldn't get past the call centre. So God knows what they were telling her. Probably, uh, uh, yes, thank you. That is the best that we can do, and you owe the money. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen should ignore that bill because it takes a little bit of time for the billing system to press process the removal. So, like, that's just rubbish, isn't it? Like, how's a, a, a joint, Telstra, it's got billions of dollars, worth billions, worth billions of dollars, and it takes, what, it takes five days for the a, a reversal of a an amount on an account to actually come through and hit the account. I don't understand. But look, I'll show you her bill. There's a, I've got a picture of her bill. She let me in and I took a photo. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a doozy. It's nearly filled the whole box. The, the little the little payment box on the invoice. That's, that's, that's huge. That's unreal, that. Yeah. So do you reckon they'll give her a month free? <laughs> Probably not. So to avoid, oh, to avoid a late payment fee of up to $15, please pay, pay by the due date. Yeah, good story. Good uh, story. Um, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, what uh, else have you got, John? And, and, and yeah. Telstra at the moment is doing this promotion where they don't want to be, have any more bill shock. <laughs> right. Oh, well, what did they call that one? Well, <clears throat> the only thing that, that article didn't say was, like, why, what was, what caught, like, say, I would have liked to have seen the services that caused it. I think someone was saying the article went on, and I think that Trevor Trevor Long guy was saying um, that to to use that to get up to that stage of amounts of money, it's equivalent to watching thirty thousand movies a month. So um, it was just an insane amount. You you wouldn't be able to download that much. You wouldn't be able to talk that much. You wouldn't be able to just do anything. It's just a it's just a crazy bill, wasn't it? Just crazy. Uh all right, Joe, what else is cooking down there? Here's one from um, Apple, and it's an iOS 13 um, update. will um, remind you to cancel any subscriptions that you have when you remove an app from your phone. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so you know how sometimes people uninstall their apps and they're subscribed to yeah. a, a monthly fee or, a, or, a, or a, you know, some sort of a fee that you do every, every, every month? Well, apparently now this new um, new feature in iOS 13 um, allows allows you the option to either unsubscribe from that that service, or if you're going to keep the app and just want to remove it and put it onto another device, um, it gives you the option to save it. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's a good idea because a lot of times. Uh, subscriptions get lost, don't they? Like, and even with PayPal, you know, you might uh, go and uh, uh, cancel something, but the subscription will remain, and then you, you st- st- keep shelling it out. You got to keep your eyes on these things. Yeah, that's right. So uh, this is this is a good idea from Apple to introduce this feature. Yeah, yeah, because I know I've just as a matter of course, every now and then when I think of it, I go into my because I've got the Android now, I go into the Google subscriptions and and even PayPal, and just just make sure that everything that I've got is current and that I that I need it. And um, yeah, because otherwise you can just. You only get probably get charged once more, and you go, "Damn thing!" and then go in straight away and get rid of it. But uh, yeah, that's that's a good tip, Joe. Good work. Uh, I'll tell you another good tip is I went into the Google account today and like uh, just tidied up, you know, third party apps that have access to my Google account. And I think it was uh, if you want to check what they are, because you know when you sign up to things or you log into things, it is log in as Google, and then you know well then when you do that, they've got access to your Google account in certain areas. So to to keep a track of all that uh, from memory, don't quote me on this, but I think it was uh, myaccount.google.com preferences or, or permissions. That's what it was. Uh, permissions. So go there, my account dot google dot com slash permissions and then you just go through a whole list of them and you see the ones that you're not using anymore you know like uh, I don't know the uh, I don't know Microsoft Mosaic Extender from the Windows Store delete <laughs> things like that just delete them uh, all right where look uh, where am I going to take is this time I'm going to go up to remember the Volkswagen the Beetle everyone knows the little Beetle don't you 
I got yeah. a, I got a little bit I got a little video here. I'll tell you a little story about the the, the Beetle. While oh, you're watching that, uh, the Volkswagen is ending production of the latest version of the Beetle this week at its plant in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, the car, which we can see there on the screen, a landmark design. There's no mistaking about the design of it. You'd see one. You knew what it was anyway. You saw it. The United States became Volkswagen's most important foreign market, uh, peaking at apparently 563,522 cars in 1968 or 40% of their production. The last of the 5961 final editions of the Beetle is headed for a museum after ceremonies in Puebla uh, yesterday, July 10th, to mark the end of production. So they're gone. They're finished. I didn't even know they were still making them. No, they did not, to be honest. <laughs> oh, they, I, yeah, I've seen them around. You call those new-looking ones Beetles? They're a bit more sleeky, but you'd... They're still unmistakable. They must be. They must well, be. No, it's actually made by BMW now, aren't they? The new Beetle. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh no, I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking of the Mini. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, they're they're very uh, an iconic design, aren't they? You know, and then I suppose sprouted movies. You remember Herbie? You ever watch those, Joe? Herbie goes bananas and. Yep, yep, remember that. <laughs> Herbie rides again. I think. <laughs> the one. Who was the guy? Was that Don Knotts? Is my memory that can't be that good? Was it Don Knotts that was in that sort of stuff? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, look, sticking with uh, sticking with Volkswagen, I got another Volkswagen story. Uh, the Volkswagen reveals a modern combi van concept. Now, do I have a video of this one? Oh, geez, I might have. Let, let's swap videos, and I'll tell you about the. Uh, I'll tell you about this one. Uh, now, this is a one-off. So I don't know why they bother, but anyway, they've revealed a modern take on the classic uh, of the old combis. The, uh, the one-off Type 20 concept doesn't mess with the classic styling of the Volkswagen, uh, which is the Type 2 split window combi, but it instead focuses on the, the tech and so forth that has they've, they've thrown in it and a couple of little design aspects. Uh, the Type 20 is a... So who says this? This is a quote from... I must have thought someone in Volkswagen. Uh, the Type 20 is a fantastic example of how we celebrate our heritage while striving to advance our technology. Instead of air-cooled boxer engine, there's a 90-kilowatt electric motor and a 10-kilowatt battery pack for short emissions-free driving. Instead of traditional mechanical suspension, there is an air suspension setup. So this suspension apparently will automatically raise the car as the driver approaches it, making it easier to get inside. Uh, the Type to raise the car or lower the car? I don't know. The Type 20 concept also has artificial intelligence computer chip produced by NVIDIA, something that allows biometric identification by using facial recognition. Uh, there's a, a set, uh, there's a Star Wars-like holographic display creating 3D images on the dashboard. Now, the so-called conversational digital assistant uses microphones to decipher natural speech from the front and the rear of the cabin. There's an external microphone outside the car to pick up voice commands. The mirrors and wheels are also a new look, designed to reduce weight and add a touch of modernity. Is that a word? Modernity. The Type, tw the type 20 will never be produced. <laughs> but it's, uh, it sounds like a pretty awesome little vehicle, doesn't it? Looks oh. really interesting. I mean, it's got that wired look about the, the, the brackets and stuff. Yeah, well, it looks just like a normal little combi van, but inside it's got all this other stuff going on. Yeah. But that, even that's a little iconic. That's an iconic design as well, isn't it? Like, you just... Yeah, you just you just never miss them. You know exactly what they are when you see them. Yeah. Did you... You haven't owned a combi, Joe? Ever owned a combi? No, I've never had the combi, no. No, nah, one of my mates used to have a, uh, a DAC DAC or a V-Dub, and uh, he cut the top of it so it was a convertible, and yeah... You know, love and life. <laughs> love and life it was good. It used to be good. It used to get around. He drove it everywhere. Uh, all right. What else you got, Joe? Uh, this week um, on um, upcoming and uh, new gadgets, yeah. I've got this one called uh, a Bluetooth cassette player. A Bluetooth cassette player? That's what we need? Yeah. You know, the good old days when you used to put tapes in, in uh, cassette players and start playing those things? Yeah, just remember those things, yes. Yes, well, there's a lot of reasons why people don't want to use them anymore. I mean, the size of them, et cetera, et cetera. The quality of the music's not the best. But a company called 
NIMM Labs um, is no stranger when it comes to upgrading antique technology with modern conveniences. Um, what it does is uh, this particular company has its own um, cassette player, which they call it the um, OK cassette player. OK. Um, it brings, you know, new sort of functionality um, to cassette players with the addition of Bluetooth 5 built right into it. Right. And so, but who's using these? Who's you? Why would you want one? Well, I, I guess if you've got a lot of tapes running, running around and you still want to sort of play them, you can still <laughs> play them with one of these. All it is, it's just a matter of plugging um, uh, some headphones into the into it, but as you normally would, because it's got a headphone jack, mm. or you can Bluetooth it across to um, speakers, uh, wireless headphones or earbuds. Right. Yeah, well, so I the guess, new Bluetooth cassette player eliminates the inconvenience of a cord, um, but it also has everything else that you would normally have when it comes to using a cassette player, you know, from fast forward, rewind, uh, try, you know, to find the track that you want. You can record songs in real time like we used to when you used to push play and record. Right. Um, nice. And you can carry around a whole bunch of tapes like you used to as well to listen to tapes. Well, I don't know about what the listener. I'm trying to get stuff off tapes. That's well, why I've got one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, there you go. I mean, you know, some people. I don't know. It's 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 a toy. It's it's a nostalgic thing. You know, what I mean, it's it's a nice to have thing if, if you're into the gadgets. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Just rock down the street with the little uh, the Walkman, Bluetooth Walkman, by your, on your on your belt. Um, but yeah, like that thing I just held up for those on the audio is to say it's a converter, a cassette rec- converter. Uh, so you put your cassette in and so you can record it onto it's a USB thing. But yeah, because I've got a few uh, cassette tapes around, you know, probably. Yeah, so if you've got a few of those around, um, I don't know, if you have some you know, elderly parents or relatives or something that are not real good with technology, all they do is know how to push, play, fast forward, rewind, cassettes of that might have sitting around for ages. Mm. Just buy one of these for them. Well, I'll tell you. it up to a Bluetooth speaker and away you go. Well, what's on? Uh, apparently they come in three colours. They come in uh, Sakura pink. Ooh. They come in cloud white, mm. um, evening blue. Ooh. And they cost somewhere between 90 and 125 bucks, but I reckon it's US dollars. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't really yearn for the sound <laughs> these I mean, days. I, I don't know. I, I don't think you'll actually get that on these ones. I think they're, they're pretty good. I mean... Um, but wouldn't you get it just because be, it's tape? They have a pretty good, you know, cassette head mm. on them. Because what, what, so I, I listen when I was uh, getting the, the audio off my tapes. Like, they're not music tapes or anything because, you know, the music's on Spotify and everything. But it's just audio tapes that I remember when I recorded when I was a kid. And all you hear on is just me and my brother fighting and <laughs> stuff. It's quite entertaining. <laughs> Going back, you know, 40 years. Justin says it's a Sony um, Walkman reinvented. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much that's what it is. Um, It's just that this one here's got a Bluetooth feature on it and it allows you to Bluetooth it. I I guess if you're really, really keen, you could Bluetooth it to your car. Um, You could. You could. Yeah, so anywhere you've got Bluetooth devices, you can Bluetooth it. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so that (laughs) that's interesting. I was watching a show the other night. Uh, on the stand, and it was, I think it was a uh, line of duty as an English like cop show sort of thing. And I noticed when they called people in for an interview, they had you know the double tape deck. And I, I think I passed comment and go, Oh, they're still using tape decks for these interviews, you know. And, and I guess when you think about it, well, yeah, it's it's a per- pretty much a permanent record, isn't it? Like you know, you can't you know accidentally brush past the, the metal detector with the USB in your pocket and it wipes and all this sort of stuff. Well, I suppose tapes can still wipe in that sort of fashion good strong magnet probably do it anyway but yeah good old good old cassette tapes eh good yeah old. well you mentioned double cassette decks I've actually picked up a few uh, was it a, um, maybe a couple of months ago a dual CD player oh right? so it has a, a CD player side by side as in like a uh, a portable uh, entertainment system yeah <laughs> right oh let's let's see I'm going to look one up let's see if I can find let's get rid of the little give me a little web page here uh, what, what, what was it? A dual CD player system. Yeah. All right, let's have a look. Boombox. I mean, I don't know if it... Oh, is that something like that? That's a bit fancy, that one. Now, this is the old technology. 
Um, I'm not, I don't have it here in front of me, but it's in my other room there where I keep all my little gadgets and stuff. But this is a, a full-on CD tech um, player. Let me just let me just give me a sec. I'll go and have a look at the model number and everything, and see if we can find a picture of it. All right. In a sec. Well, I'll just uh, just keep talking about these things. Look, there's a lot of things that you can do. Like, look at that. You can uh, a Bluetooth record player. Oh, now you're talking. Records are coming back in, aren't they? Look at that fella. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, that's got two CDs in the bottom of it. That's something for Joe. It's a boy tone BT twenty nine B. Amazon.com. Uh, look, I had a few records that I put onto USB. Uh, the old man bought one of those, not one of those ones on screen there, but just a normal Audi one. Yes, I do shop at Audi. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, a normal USB record player. And they work a treat. You know, all those old records like uh, that you haven't heard since you was a kid, since the record player broke or your needle broke. Uh, records like, uh, oh, geez, what records did I put over? I put over the, the Daryl and Ozzy record. Like a Daryl and Ozzy, I had a... Uh, uh, what else did I have there? I had a few. Um, the Super Flying Fun Show record. I had all the good ones. <laughs> all the good ones. A couple of ABBA ones. But you get ABBA these days uh, somewhere, um, you know, on the Spotify and everything. But interestingly, talking about Spotify, I uh, I was talking to a guy uh, this morning. I didn't know how easy it was to actually get songs up on Spotify. Like, I know uh, years ago it was uh, really hard to get them up on iTunes. You had to have a company that was registered and, you know, go through a bit of paperwork and a bit of hoo-ha to get your song up on iTunes. Uh, maybe because you you were selling them. Maybe that was the that was the, the difference. But on Spotify, apparently you can, anyone can just log in and upload their songs. And apparently they don't appear in the search list. So if you search for something, unless you type exactly uh, that song name, it won't appear in the search list until you've hit at least a thousand plays. So uh, it's quite it was quite interesting that little chat I had with that person. Uh, shout out to Eli if you're listening. Um, yeah, it was a good, it was a good catch up this morning. Yeah, cheers. Uh, all right, Joe's back. Did you get a model, Joe? No, I didn't. And I could see it, but it's just down amongst all these. Uh Things that are on top of it, I'm not going to pull everything apart to go. No, in. that's all right. I can see it. I yeah, just can't we know see what, what, you mean. what the brand name or what the model is. Yeah, but it, it looks like a um, like a um, a portable cassette deck with uh, the the handle that you hold on the top, and you can bring yeah, out right. two CDs. There's one there with two CDs. I've never seen no, one. With... It's not a traditional type. It's not a traditional type of um, a CD player. It's, yeah, it's the actual one where you can. Double ones where you can pick it up and walk away with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Does it work? I, I don't know. I picked it up at a, um, a garage sale and uh, I paid, what, $45 or something like that for it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's working or not. Actually, I think this one could be it here. Let me just see. It's. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Uh... Uh, Dan, yeah, yeah. You walk into Audi to buy some milk and bread. You walk out with a stereo system surveillance camera <laughs> and a new set of sheets. You walk out with heaps more than that. <laughs> yeah, new um, tools, spanners, screwdrivers, work boots, hazard lights, and a couple of fluffy toys. That's right. That's a good old Audi. And what's Brett saying here? What's Mark doing? Yeah, he's just plodding around. He's. Uh, can you find him on? I told you he's got that. He's done all those '80s playlists on Spotify. If you search MDJ. On Spotify, you'll find his uh, profile, and there's a lot of 80s playlists that he's put together from the old 80s, 70s, and 80s uh, cassette uh, compilations. So you can get those. Uh, yeah, but he's just plodding around. He's, he's he's still writing music. I think he puts a few things up on SoundCloud. I'm not sure what his what his thing is on SoundCloud. Uh, it's probably MDJ as well. I'd say. Uh, let's see if I can Google it for you. MDJ. SoundCloud, like, you know, like, he does sing the song, he's, look, he's no singer, but uh, the the concept's there, because I think he wants to, you know, hopefully someone might uh, pick up the song, yeah, that's not a bad song, but I think he, he should just get someone singing properly, <laughs> might have a better chance of someone picking him up, hey Mark, yeah, alright, uh, alright, where were we Joe, what were you up to? What, were you going to say yeah, something? Yeah, look, I, I couldn't find a model number on that, so I'll, I'll see if I can find it for next week's show. All right, cool. All right. Now, uh, look, my my last one this week, I thought we'd just... And we're going to try and do some regular type of segments, as Joe was saying last week. He's got his, uh, his uh, new and upcoming gadget segment. I'm going to revisit the This Week in Tech segment. And this week, uh, the highlight for me was Donkey Kong and Mario's Birthday. 
Now look, I've even got, oh geez, you guys on the video, you're getting it all tonight, aren't you? I've got a video for you to watch <laughs> while I uh, while I do this. Now I'll put that over there and put that there. So, oh, can I mute that? I don't know if you can hear that, but you know what that is? That's the Donkey Kong music. So I'm unable at the time to acquire a license uh, to create a video game based on Popeye, Nintendo decided to create a game that mirrored the characteristics and rivalry of Bluto. Now you might remember Bluto is the arch nemesis of Popeye. Uh, Donkey Kong is named after the game's villain and it's a pet gorilla that's gone crazy. The game's hero is originally called Jumpman but is retroactively renamed Mario once the game becomes popular and Nintendo decide to use the character in future games. Oh, let me get rid of that ad. I hate ads on YouTube. Uh, due to Yes, I know you can pay for it and get rid of them. Uh, due, due to the similarity between Donkey Kong and King Kong, uh, Universal Studios sued Nintendo, claiming Donkey Kong violated the trademark. Kong, however, is a common Japanese slang for gorilla. So, bapow. The lawsuit was ruled in favour of Nintendo. The success of Donkey Kong helped Nintendo become one of the dominant companies in the video game market. I remember this game when I was a kid, just, yeah, countless 20 cents donated. Remember that one, Joe? You played this? Uh, I remember playing it when I was a kid, yeah, but also I do remember my kids had uh, the little dual screen version of this. Oh, yeah, right. Yes, I remember the old, that. The old, I was it, an orange colour um, dual screen display with uh, Donkey Kong on it. Yes, yes. That might have been one of the first dual screens of those. Because I remember, well, Popeye was the first one I remember playing. Um, let's see if I can find a, yeah, let's see if I can find one. Uh, so Popeye, did I say when that, when, it was, I think from memory, I didn't say when that was released, but I think the Donkey Kong was released, I think this week back in 81. So to give you there, so happy birthday to uh, Donkey Kong. Now it was a, what was it, the Popeye game, handheld game. I remember these things. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That was my, but it was a dual screen. It was an orange one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So that's the, yeah, one of those. That's the Popeye one. That's right. You had to catch all the things that was Bluto chucking at you to try and sink your boat, and you had to catch them all to save Olive. That's the one. And what was the Donkey Kong? I remember Turtle Bridge, Donkey Kong. I think there's another one that we used to play. I think my brother might still have them. There you are, Joe. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. I think we've got it somewhere at home somewhere. Yeah. Oh, look, what's that one? That's a that's a plain one. Donkey Kong 2. Yeah, there was a Donkey Kong 2 as well. Yeah, right. Yeah, those are the days, the good old games, eh? Ones that you could actually play only with two, like two or three buttons that you couldn't get confused. Yeah. We were, what was this? We were, we were drunk on episode 100, were we? I'll have to go back and have a look at that, Brett. Yeah, right, eh? <laughs> you can't blame me for that one, Brett. I don't think I was here at 100. No, you weren't, Joe. Maybe, maybe the what are we up to? Six forty. Maybe, maybe the seven hundredth. Well, that's another year. Six forty. So yeah, that'd be another year and a bit. Jeez, it goes quick, doesn't it? it goes quick. Uh, all right. Well, I think I'm out, Joe. Are you got any more, or you're you're pretty good done? No, that's it for this week. Um, like you were saying before, um, I'm going to try and introduce a uh, securities and uh, scams and stuff like that. Uh, episode where you know we just sort of like a little bit of an update on what's the latest scams going on or the latest security threats that are happening. Yeah, I think there um, was something this week with Microsoft, wasn't there? Some. Uh, yeah. So mm. we, we're going to try and bring, a re- bring in a regular segment for that. Uh, so my special will be done. My area would probably be mostly for that and yep. for the up, upcoming dead gadgets. So um, yeah, we'll try and do that for you. Try and make it a bit more educational. Is that where we're going? No, no, don't say that. <laughs> That's where we're going. Yeah, so um, yeah. So if you want to hear anything or, or see anything, just write us an email, uh, joe or glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. And uh, so I'm not sure, is week number four, is that our plan these days? Jason and Warlock might be in next week for the show. Uh, so that'll be just give you know give you something that you something else to listen to. No, that's so, okay. I, I, I've got uh, next week, I can't make it anyway. I'm going up to Perth for... Um the soccer. Oh, right. That's a long way to go. Oh, yeah. I'm going to watch Manchester United play against Leeds. In Perth, is it? Yeah, at the Optus Stadium over there. Right. Why do they come out? Is it like just exhibition or is it for points? Or what? Uh, it's one of those international friendly games. 
where they just a promotional type game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good stuff. Good it's stuff. A, it's a, like a pre-season training event for them. Now, is one of those your team? Yes, Manchester United is my team, yeah. Right. That, that's the most supported team, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm learning little bits, Joe, every week. Every every week. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's it. Um, good stuff. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching on the YouTube. Uh, look, if you w- did watch on Facebook, sorry about the audio again. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'll, I'll, if you actually, I might leave the uh, Facebook on after the show. If you if you can hang around for five sex, Joe, just so we can maybe sort that out and uh, see how we go. But until next time, which uh, I think might be Jason Warlock, we'll see what their time schedule is. Uh, We'll see you next time. See you, Joe. Right, See you, Glenn. See the listeners. We'll see you next time, and uh, good win by the Blues, and hope the Sharks can have a win this week. They've been going crap. All right, see you guys. Have fun. Bye-bye.